The underlying legend of the jackalope, upon which the Wyoming taxidermists are, were building, may be related to similar stories in other cultures and other historical times. Researchers suggest that at least some of the tales of the horned hares were inspired by sightings of rabbits infected with the Shope papilloma virus. And since... We're, this is the second time we've encountered it. We're going to talk about it a little bit. Okay. Uh, this is this will be the trigger warning that you were... Exactly. Uh, so, so if you do not... If you are triggered or do not like this part, just skip through it. So, the show papillomavirus is a disease that causes antler-like tumors or horn-like tumors to grow in various places on a rabbit's head and body. Now, mostly it is on the head, and sometimes they get so big they interfere with the rabbit's ability to eat and the poor creatures starve. Oh, As a bunny mother, I would never want that to happen to mine, but that's probably, that probably won't happen because... It's... Very rare, he said. So that's. It's thing. also known as a cottontail rabbit papillomavirus. We all, we all know when Noel is not a cottontail. No. The virus was originally discovered in cottontail rabbits in the Midwestern U.S., but can also infect brush rabbits, black tailed jackrabbits, snowshoe hares, and European rabbits. Yep. Nope. No. And since yours is a Dutch bunny, she should be safe. Should be safe. It's not been encountered in them. But because it causes these horn like protuberances on the head of these creatures, that's where they think it came from. So. <laughs> now. Folklorists see the jackalope as a, a group of uh, tall tail animals known as fearsome critters, common to North American culture since the turn of the 20th century. These fabulous beasts appear in tall tales featuring hodags, giant snakes, fur bearing trout, and many others. Some such stories lend themselves to comic hoaxing by entrepreneurs who seek attention for their own personal or their region's fortune. Jackalope is a portmanteau of the word jackrabbit and antelope. Right. Right. So. Yes. The, the Douglas uh, variant, the Douglas Wyoming variant, because Douglas Wyoming has a jackalope festival. They pr probably have, the, they're not the only ones, but they're, they, they have the biggest one. Uh, the New York Times attributes the American jackalope's origin to a 1932 hunting outing involving Douglas Herrick of Douglas, Wyoming. Herrick and his brother had studied taxidermy by mail at order as teenagers, and when the brothers returned from a hunting trip for jackrabbits, Herrick tossed a carcass into the taxidermy store where it came to rest beside a pair of deer antlers. The accidental combination of animal forms sparked Herrick's idea, Herrick's idea for the jackalope. The first jackalope the brothers put together was sold for ten dollars to Roy Ball, who displayed it in Douglas's Labont Hotel. The mounted head was stolen in 1977. The jackalope became a popular local attraction in Douglas, where the Chamber of Commerce issues jackalope hunting licenses to tourists. The tags are good for hunting during official jackrabbit season, which occurs for only one day, June 31st, uh, a non-existent date, as June has only 30 days, from midnight to 2 a.m. The hunter must have an IQ greater than 50, but not over 72. Thousands of licenses have been issued. Uh, in Herrick's hometown of Douglas, there's an eight-foot statue of a jackalope, and the town hosts its annual Jackalope Day celebration in early June. Awesome. So, and then it sort of took off. Uh, Frank English, Rapid City, South Dakota, made and sold many thousands of jackalopes since retiring from the Air Force in 1981. He, in fact, is the only supplier of the uh, jackalope heads to Cabela's, a major outdoor theme retail company. Uh, 
they sell for about $150. Uh, yeah, that's not that's not bad, considering how much first we According to legend, the jackalope can imitate the human voice. Wait, what? According to legend, jack and jackalopes can I- imitate the human voice. Uh, when oh, cowboys ga- gathered by the campfire singing at night, jackalopes could be heard mimicking their voices uh, and singing along, usually oh. as a tenor. Aww. I, I want to be involved. I would think jackalopes would be more of an alto or even soprano, but what do I know? It is said that jackalopes uh, only breed during lightning flashes and that their antlers make the act difficult despite the hare's reputation for f- fertility. Hmm. Well, yeah. So, and, and that's the sort of thing that separates a tall tale, is the Germans are content to have the Wolpertinger and the Rasselbach, and that's fine. They never said anything about it mating during lightning flashes, and I think that's cool. Fair enough. Yeah. It's like someone thought this out. True. Very true. Now, jackalopes... That's American ingenuity for you right there, baby. Jackalopes have appeared in multiple games, multiple books. Uh, my favorite appearance of the jackalope was on a TV show called America's Funniest People, where Dave Coulier... Uncle Joey from Full House, for those who don't know him by anything else, Dave Coulier voiced that jackalope, which the, they let the fans home at home judge vote on the name, and the name they gave it was Jack Chang Bada Bing. Uh-huh. And its tagline was, fast as fast can be, you'll never catch me. I remember that jackalope. And yes, so, and they were basically live action cartoons. Mm-hmm. Sort of uh, Roadrunner coyote variety without a coyote. Right. It was a, basically a, a human hunter, but it was never the same one as I remember. Mm-hmm. So, jackalopes are very well known in this country and in others. And that is our episode on fictional feral rabbits. Love it. It was a great episode. I had fun. I did too. Maybe a little too much fun, but I had fun. (laughs) How about you, Brownie? Did you have fun? Brownie had fun too. Uh, I could care less if Brownie had fun. Well, it's okay. We care. We care. Maybe the listeners care. They might. The listener might very well care. This is our dog. He's not Noel, but he's a good boy. Uh, he's not a good boy. He's a bad boy, but we love him. He's very... He, he's not a good boy, but he's a very... He's not a good he's boy. He's a loyal boy. But he's not a bad he boy. He loves us. Um, he, he loves us, all right. A bit too much. So, as I said, that's our episode on mm-hmm. Horned Rabbits. Your thoughts, Krista, now that you, we've covered everything? Well, once you see it in pictures, it's it's really easy to tell if they're fake or not. Or... Oh, uh, Krista, don't get me wrong. We're, I'm not saying it's a real thing or it's ever been a real thing. What I'm saying is, what do you think... Here's my thing Okay. about these... Mythical feral rabbits. The ones at me. Mu- oh my god, I'm so sorry, Brandy. The ones at museums. I don't think they're real, but if if there were such thing, it would definitely be in the separate worlds thing that you're talking about. See, here's what I believe: everything that is made in real life is just in another section of the world that we don't know about yet or in another place that we have no idea. There are so many places on space that we don't know that have anything. Um, 
so like basically if you create a character it's probably out there it might be out there somewhere you just gotta think about it um you just I'm the one to think that of something like that as well no it might not be here yet but here's my thing if you make it or so something is, if people keep seeing something like it, it's probably there. I just, I just think what you create could possibly become a thing that you don't know about because there are so many places that we as humans have not ex explored. There really could be so many potential things that happen. <clears throat> okay. Hi. Uh, I, you know, bunnies, German bunnies. Egyptian Isn't it how bunnies. Playboy started with German bunnies? Could be. Anyway. I'm all about the fluffy tails and the long ears and the horny horns, whatever. To me, it speaks to the ingenuity of the human species. Okay. Let's take the jackalope, which, okay, argue all you want that it could have been based off the rack, rack, the Rasselbach or, you know, bunnies that, that had that disease. Mm -hmm. It's still kind of amazing that they went out and they made it. And not only did they, did they make it, they made a bunch of them and continued to sell them. And it's become like this roadside travel tradition. Uh, where you can get, you know, postcards, and they've appeared in comic books and, and video games. And it just, it says something about the human imagination that this creature that never existed has more of an impact than people who have. <laughs> and I like that. I also like the tall tale. You don't tell tall tales because you believe them. You tell them because they're fun. I mean, who doesn't like the idea of Pecos Bill lassoing a cyclone? Mm. The cyclone? Probably not. But you know what? Cyclones are horrible things that destroy people's houses. So, yeah, to that. But I'm just saying... The next time we play D&D, &D, you guys might run into an Al Mirage or a Jackalope or two. Ah, oh, heck yeah, I'm gonna beat them with my bunny butt. I don't actually have a bunny character, I won't, no. <clears throat> yeah, but we could make one, we've got rules for it now. We do? Yeah, there's rules for it, there's also rules for owl characters. I want to be a bunny. Fey Wild, they're, they're Fey Wild races. <laughs> what? Why'd oh, you okay. show me that? It's a big picture of a bunny. He's very cute. Ah, okay. So, that's our show. Uh, first of all, thanks to the listeners as always. Always. Thanks to Bill Barrent for our music. Thanks and, to Bill. And if, if you guys, because I've actually had people reach out to me about the music and want to know if, A who our music creator is and, and, you know, which we say every week it's Bill and B can they reach him and C will he make them music for money? Which the answer is yes. Yes, he will. Uh, just go to, uh, Bill Barrett at voiceovermusic.com, uh, or Bill Barrett. And that's spelled B E H R E N D T at sbcglobal.com. Mm, can we maybe do a shout out to him on Facebook so that we actually have that information on there for him? Yeah, yeah. Well, he's in the Facebook group, so that okay. that's another easy yeah, way. Yeah, absolutely. To, 
if you want to get his attention, you can go to the Facebook group and, Hey, Bill, I need music. I'm like, Hi, Bill. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah. Uh,